welcome to the Courageous Self-Care Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Marlette. On this show, we get into self-care that goes beyond bubble baths, chocolate, and wine. It's the self-care that takes you on a journey. It's transformational. It completely changes your life, and it takes effort. There are definitely going to be obstacles, and so it helps to have a guide. So voila! I'm here to help you. Not that I have everything figured out, but I certainly have invested a lot of time, energy, and money over the last decade learning all of these different strategies and ideas, and I just got to a point where I knew that they were no longer meant to be inside of me. They were meant to get out into the world, hence this podcast. And really, that's how Courageous Self-Care got started. So this month, we are talking about taking embodied action. If you missed the episode where I started talking about that, it's Courageous Self-Care Foundation number nine. And taking embodied action means going from what is in the unknown, the realm of the metaphysical, the place where ideas come from, taking those ideas and bringing them into our physical reality. In order to do that, we must bring our, well, we must use our bodies in some way. Ideas and thoughts that just stay in our head and we take no action with our bodies forever stay in our head. And then actually what happens is they go to someone else who will put them into action. So if you've ever had an idea and you didn't take action on it and then you saw someone else coming up with that idea and putting it into action and you said, hey, that was my idea. Yes, absolutely. That's how it works. Ideas go out to those who will be able to or have the potential to bring them into reality. And if that person doesn't take action, then it's gifted to someone else. We get all sorts of ideas. And we're not meant to act on all of them, but the ones that really have energy for us, we do want to use our bodies to bring them into reality. Now, every time we take an idea out of the metaphysical, out of the unknown, out of the place where it is ground zero for energy, there's friction. There is something called trouble at the border. And I learned this from a wonderful book called The Energy of Money. I had studied this idea for many years. I love studying about the metaphysical and quantum physics. And this book really synthesized what was happening specifically, or what is happening specifically when we get an idea. So the metaphysical realm is where there's just pure potential. Ideas are gifted to human beings. And then we, if we decide to take that idea and bring it into physical reality, we put it into action using our bodies in some way, there is always friction. There is what the author calls trouble at the border. And this is just how it works. She has a lovely diagram in the book of the metaphysical and then ideas coming up from the metaphysical into our minds. And then there's a line, which is the border, the border before the idea comes into physical reality. When we get to that border, we encounter obstacles. Usually those obstacles are in the form of our very own thoughts. Have you ever had an idea and then the next thought that comes to you is, oh, well, I could never do that, or who am I to do that, or I'm too young for that, or I'm too old for that, or any sort of excuse. What's going on there? This is the trouble at the border. Our thoughts are coming from our ego, what I like to call the great trickster. The great trickster wants to keep things the same, and so it will come up with a thousand and one tricks in the form of thoughts, to keep things the same. Different, expansion, evolution of ourselves is very scary for that great trickster. So it will come up with those reasons and excuses that can be very convincing. They can stop us in our tracks. 
However, if we know to expect them, we have something that can help us go beyond the border, and that is awareness. When we are aware that those thoughts are not actually true, they're just little tricks, they are meant to keep us safe, we can appreciate the great trickster and say, hey, thanks for looking out for me. I appreciate that you want to keep me safe and comfortable. And this time, I'm going to not really take your suggestions. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to ignore those thoughts that sound very convincing. And I'm going to move past where I currently am in my life. So you can see that awareness can be really helpful. In order to have that awareness, we need to understand that we are not our thoughts. Our thoughts are separate energy from us. We have at our core what lots of people call our soul or our essence. And what our soul and essence is designed to do is expand. We come into each lifetime with the intention of expanding our experience, our soul's energy, and that's why we get these ideas. They are all to expand our experience, to challenge us, to go beyond what is the current norm. Those little thoughts come up. That's the trouble at the border. There's that friction. And the example given in the book, The Energy of Money, is a rocket ship. It takes a tremendous amount of fuel and energy for the rocket to leave the earth and to move up into the atmosphere. Once it passes that, it doesn't need any of that fuel. That's that friction, that trouble at the border. There is trouble getting out of the atmosphere. It takes an incredible amount of energy. Two other books that I've been reading recently are, have been really helpful in supporting this idea. So one is called The Talent Code, and it illustrates how our brains work, that each neuron, each ne- uh, electrical circuit, as we're developing skills, needs to be coded in this white substance called myelin. And myelin wraps incredibly slowly. Every skill that we have is a result of increasing thickness of this myelin. And the only way we can increase the thickness of the myelin is doing things over and over and over. It's repetition. So in order to build those skills and to move beyond the trouble at the border, to put ideas into action, we must have perseverance. We must be persistent. And we also need to have passion. So if an idea comes to you and you're not really passionate about it, feel free to let it go. If an idea comes to you that you do feel passionate about, then understand that there will be thoughts that want to stop you and keep you where you are, and also that you will need to put in a significant amount of effort and energy to bring that idea into physical reality. This is not meant to discourage you. It's meant to help you understand that when you start something, you are going to move through those obstacles that are both in your mind and out in the world to accomplish what it is that you want to bring into reality. The other book that I'm, I just started the other day I'm loving is called grit and it really supports the idea of needing passion and persistence to bring our ideas into reality to make them happen. And what we need for that is grit. And grit is simply overcoming those and not listening to and choosing to ignore those thoughts, that trouble at the border. So to synthesize all of this, I'll give you an example. I am someone who has been really susceptible to rejection. It has been excruciatingly painful for me. I had one time where I organized... um, something online, a webinar or something like that. I was going to teach something that I was really passionate about online and I put a lot of effort into inviting people and I got people saying, yes, I'll come. And then the time for everyone to log on came and I waited and I waited and I waited and no one showed up. It was like 
organizing a big birthday bash and not a single person attended. It was devastating to me. It hurt like a physical pain. My heart was broken. And that experience set me up to fear getting rejected along with other experiences like that. I'd, I'd never enjoyed rejection. So fast forward to this year, I had the idea that came to me in a meditation that I wanted to put on a big courageous self-care festival here in Calgary. It's a big idea. I have done events in the past and have struggled through getting even eight or sometimes four people in the room. I've struggled to get 12. I've struggled to get 30. And this festival, I have a much bigger vision. And so it terrified me. If I could not even get two people to come to a workshop, how, I, how am I going to get hundreds of people into a room? I also knew that I wanted to overcome this fear of rejection. I read another book called Rejection Proof, also a fantastic book. And the author of that one designed all of these different silly tasks for himself to put him in situations where he knew he would get rejected so that he could build up resistance to it. And that's what I wanted to do with this festival. So I started off by asking people to be speakers, people to be vendors, and I've asked hundreds and hundreds of people, and I've gotten so many no's. And as they have increased in number, all of those no's, of course, some yeses came along because it's just statistics. One in 10 people will say yes. And I noticed that for the most part, each time someone says no, whether they are saying no to being a speaker or a vendor or an attendee, it's hurting less and less. So for me, the trouble at the border was that fear of rejection. And I decided I am going to be gritty. I'm going to be persistent. There have definitely been times when I wanted to listen to the great trickster and quit Fortunately, those times came after I had a lot of committed people who had invested their energy and time and money, so I couldn't quit. And this experience is a really good example of what it takes to move through that trouble at the border and bring something into physical reality. Now, we don't know the end of the story yet because this event is coming up in about three weeks' time. So I can't tell you that it was a resounding success, but what I can tell you is it's already been a success for me because my pain of rejection has been reduced. And should I choose to do something like this again in the future, I feel like there is less chance that I will get hurt. And so I have this awareness around those thoughts that are coming in saying, well, it might be painful for you. I can just ignore them because they're a trick. So that's what you need to overcome those pesky obstacles. You need awareness of what's happening with your thoughts. You need to know that your thoughts aren't real. And you also must have the desire to challenge yourself to have that grit and that perseverance. And also because it's courageous self-care, courage means that there is some sort of value on the other side of the fear. My value was increasing my resistance to the pain of rejection. And another value is that I truly believe that self-care is a solution to so many problems. And the more women in particular, and of course men too, can benefit from this idea, the more of us that understand that taking care of ourselves is a responsibility and also a wonderful way to use our energy, that the world will be a better place. Every person learned how to prioritize their own well-being so that they could give from a place of love and joy and fulfillment. Just imagine how amazing the world would be. That is what I wanted to share with you today. It was in my heart. It was on my mind. And so I wanted to get those words out. I hope that they have served you. And I do recommend the books that I mentioned. The first one is called The Energy of Money. The second one is called The Talent Code. The third one is called Grit. And the fourth one is called Rejection Proof. All great reads. If you're looking for something to 
increase your ability to get over that trouble at the border, I recommend all of them or one of them. Fantastic reads. I always love to give you a gift at the end of the show. So if you have never accessed the Top 10 Energy Drains mini course, I would love to give that to you. It's valued at $97. And what it is, is a three-part series of, first you get a PDF that shows you what, how you're draining your energy in 10 ways that you're probably not aware of. And then a few days later, you get a video that shows, uh, has a deeper explanation of five of the energy drains and then some solutions on what to do about them. And then a few days later, you get another video that has the other five of the top 10 energy drains and a video that gives you, I mean, it gives you, I give you solutions to how to stop up those energetic drains and turn them into energy producers so that you have more energy than ever before. I would love to give that to you so you can get it at christinamarlette.com. I will also put the link in the description of this podcast. And hey, I wanted to share some great news with you. Usually I tend to keep news like this to myself for whatever reason, but I'm going to share it with you. So just last week, this podcast reached over 5,000 listens and downloads, which I think is pretty exciting. I don't know how it ranks in the world of podcasting, but I feel like it's a fantastic accomplishment. So I wanted to share that with you. And we have people listening from all over the world. It's either 20 or 30 countries. I lost track. I don't have my statistics right in front of me, but I'm so grateful to you for listening to this podcast from wherever you are. I feel like we are really connecting people in the world who are looking for something more. And I would love to encourage you to make that something more as prioritizing your own well-being. Only good things can come of it. You benefit, other people in your life benefit, and energetically people all around the world benefit when you take the time to prioritize your well-being by practicing courageous self-care. Thank you very much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, let me know by giving it a like or leaving a comment, sharing it with a friend, or becoming a follower on whatever platform you're listening to. We're on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com. So wherever you're listening, I am sending you so much love and gratitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. And give yourself a pat on the back for taking action towards your courageous self-care today by listening to this podcast. I look forward to connecting with you again next time. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.